Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We're kicking off the month of May with you this week, probably one of my favorite months, because here in Ohio, I finally can, I think I can trust. I don't know. That there will not be snow. I'm sure it's snowed in May before. In fact, in 1974, <laughs> Cleveland had two inches of snow in May. That's why I don't live in Cleveland. It's, it's very simple. That's one of many reasons Actually. people don't live in Cleveland. <laughs> Sorry. Well, May may be a busy <laughs> month for many, and yes, in some places there is still snow happening, uh, whether it's May or June. But of course, Mother's <laughs> Day is May 8th. It's also time for graduating seniors to get ready for their big day. But hey, did you guys know that May is Gardening for Wildlife Month? <laughs> So you're so supposed to plant <laughs> things that the wildlife can eat? Or skunks are out there gardening. They got Which, their little yeah, I mean, what's the verb and what's the noun in that phrase? I, I, I don't know. And, you know, actually the website where I get these from <laughs> did put a disclaimer on saying that they're not really sure of the accuracy of everything. But they recognize that that we are getting new holidays. I think that all should be the, the new theme. That should be the new model for the internet. Not really sure the accuracy of anything. The internet. <laughs> very good. Very wise. Well, this one I'm sure is accurate. It's go fetch food drive for the homeless animal month. So you're. So can't you just garden the, for the wildlife and that be the same as the go fetch for the homeless? Because homeless pets would be wildlife, right? I, th I, I, I think the gardening yeah. wildlife people and the homeless pet people are just one big conglomerate that have gotten together. Well, how about this one? It's National Service Dog Eye Examination Month. And again, we're going back to the, the animal dog wildlife <laughs> industrial we complex. We do love service dogs, by the way. We're not making fun of them. But if they have another eye check lately, eye That's check, important, right? This is it. They need to be able to guide. Can you really throw a month for somebody that doesn't realize it's their month? <laughs> I'll send them a card. They can read it. You're going to send their the eyes wild, are good. You're going to send the wildlife homeless pets a card. No, no, no. Th these are pets that have an owner, and so they have an address. And if their eyes are good enough, they can read the card. <laughs> it all makes sense. Well, there you go. Here on Faith and Friends, <laughs> we strive to make sense of it all, and the month of May means a new focus in our 2016 Faith Challenge. This month, we move into the topic of godliness. So words you won't find scattered throughout the Bible, like you will find with words like grace, but there are many scripture verses that give us a visual picture of what it means to live a godly life. Today we're taking a look at Titus 2, verses 11 and 13. Andy? For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love that it's about looking ahead, that we do these things, we, we try and live godly lives because of the hope that we have in Jesus. It's not just to, to be boxed in and, and try and do what's right for our own good, it's because we have hope in Christ Jesus. Well, certainly you look at King David, who was a man after God's own heart, yet like all of us, David was a man with many faults and he did sin but the beauty of, of our relationship with with jesus christ is our sins can be forgiven and even though it, it's difficult to live a godly night godly life it's what we should strive for and sharing the message of that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great god and savior jesus christ was the main focus of a crusade held recently april 24th to be exact and likely the main draw was guy penrod in concert but as jennifer reports that was just one of three outstanding components to the sold out event Two simple words, one life-changing message, Jesus saves. Hundreds flocked to the Nicewanger Performing Arts Center Sunday, April 24th, to attend what was being billed as a crusade for the Northwest Ohio region and beyond. Organized by Steve Coyle, founder of his National Stroke Association, it was his own experience with a stroke that changed his life forever. And Steve wanted others to experience that same life-changing opportunity. I'm sure there's a lot out there that does not know Christ, that needs to know Christ. I cannot understand how people can live their lives without him. That is the message Steve carries with him everywhere he goes these days, and he was eager to share it with the nearly 1,200 in attendance, reminding all that it is never too late to make Jesus Lord of your life. For Steve, he suffered a divorce, employment situations, and more. And then a stroke changed his physical abilities forever. But he calls it his stroke of luck.
because now he knows Jesus in a way like never before. Part one of the crusade in Van Wert was Steve's testimony. Part two was the film Heaven by the Billy Graham Association, an intense documentary chronicling the lives of several real life situations, proving God is real and all need God to lead their lives. Pastor Greg Wax says regardless of AIDS, it's a message that needs to be heard. That there will be people here who wondered if they can have hope in Jesus, but they leave here feeling the hope and knowing in their hearts that they can have that hope. Then it was time for part three, a live concert with Guy Penrod. And while Penrod's music is inspiring on its own, the Grammy Award winning singer was truly a cohesive part of the overall purpose, spreading the message that Jesus saves, surrendering all to him is worth it, and forgiveness and freedom is truly possible in your life. It's, I see it you know, much like a, a fishing trip, essentially our lives, and the word tells us there's so many things you get context clues all over the, the word and they all fit together to point somewhere. Um, one that's real important to me that I, I repeat a lot is life is but a vapor. It's in James. Here for a little while and then vanishes away. So I like pulling back, looking at big perspective in order to make smaller, you know, step-by-step -step daily decisions because those are reflected in the big picture. So if you can get the idea that this world is not your home, you're just passing through, life is just a vapor, this stuff passes, then you can start to let go of the natural stuff all around you. And what was the result from this inspirational afternoon? Many rededications to Christ, renewed encouragement to put Jesus over everything else, and knowing that God can use all things for good. Powerful event there. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, recently, District 8 FCA awarded 10 college scholarships, actually 11, to students that have been leading for God in their schools. One of the recipients was Alan East senior Ariel Schantz, who had a lot of turmoil at the start of her senior year. The start of my senior year was tough. I was preparing to go on a missions trip to India, but seven days before my departure, I became extremely sick and had an emergency appendectomy. At the same time, I went through a nasty breakup. The relationship was toxic and mentally abusive and emotionally abusive. A few weeks after that, my women's golf team was canceled and I was placed on the men's team. Even though the boys on my team treated me like a princess, my opponents were extremely offended that they had to play against a girl and weren't afraid to tell me that I was worthless and a waste of their time. They especially didn't like it when I beat them. <laughs> but all that negativity drowned out the joy of my success. By the first day of school, I was deep in a pit of depression and hatred towards myself. No one knew I was hurting so much, and no one could tell that I was dying on the inside. After five months, I finally told my parents what was happening, and I asked them for help. A counselor helped me recognize God's unfailing love for me. I've become so strong in my faith by overcoming the internal obstacles I faced. Through the painful process of 2015, FCA helped me a lot. It provided healthy challenges for me, and it still does. It's a great reminder in the morning, even though it's early, to live my day completely devoted to Christ. I love doing random acts of kindness for people. Even though I was hurting, I would always bake treats for my golf team, and I like to post encouraging sticky notes on lockers. And I've also taped money to the pop machines with, treat, with a note that says, treat yourself to a drink. Now that I've gone through the greatest trials of my life up to this point, I'm so excited to go to Cedarville University to major in early childhood education so I can become a light in the classroom like Tammy Klum and Kelly Pritchard have been to me. Well, last week you heard the start of Janelle's story about how God planted her in these villages in Kenya. The things that God has been doing since then, Bubba Watson holding a fundraising concert, the money going to build a hospital over in these rural regions and the possibility of how life could change if things would continue. But the hospital is now at a standstill. So let's pick up that story that we had last week. And tell me, give me, give me a pictorial view of what it's like over there at this point. You've got the hospital, you've got the villagers, you've got the sadness and the hopeless and despair situations. Right, and over there, they see this huge hospital, stoned hospital that one man chipped every stone by hand. Mm -hmm. And we built it you know, stone by stone, and they see it sitting there. And so then you have the corruption of the religious sect of saying it's a morgue. 
there's mm -hmm. no life going in mm -hmm. it, so it must be a morgue for the dead. So they're trying to ruin the name of Jesus Christ by it sitting empty. And so that came on top of it. And so you see Satan trying to come in and stifle it, but through the power of Jesus Christ, we go verbatim face to face with who's uh, saying those things, and God just kind of takes it all away. And so with the life that is happening, we own seven and a half acres, that's our compound. And so around that hospital is, we have a 172 student school, which we, we teach the kids that can't afford it. They can't afford 30 shillings. They can't afford, so come and hear, and come and hear the word of God. And so, you know, what is going on is life all around that hospital but everybody will say, oh, you're the blue roof building. That's how they identify. So you have this big elephant sitting here and nothing going on, but it's okay. God's still moving. Well, God has a timetable that's different than that's ours. Right. Of course, we always want to see things happen. We think we know when things need to happen, yet God is moving and working. In the time that you started your annual trips mm -hmm. to Kenya, how are you seeing God working? We know God's not done, mm -hmm. but what are the things you've already seen happen? We have, everybody always says, well, you go over and like over 4,500 people have gotten saved in nine years. So Janelle, are you discipling them? How's this going? You know, and, and you know, an evangelist can't disciple, but Benson, who is the pastor there, does disciple. Our churches do disciple everybody. And so this year God reiterated this man traveled seven miles, which doesn't seem a lot, but if you're doing it on foot or whatever. So he came to me and I said, Fred, I remember you from my first year. Yeah, and we hooked up and everything. And, and he says, Janelle, I came to tell you, when we do, we do open air crusades, and so we go and we just like Billy Graham does them in the big thing. He was one of, he's somebody that I totally love. And so we do crusades with Jesus Christ. And this man, this boy, had put enough shillings in his pocket to make, commit suicide with their brew. If you drink their alcohol, you're done. And so he wanted to commit suicide, but through our speakers, he kept hearing Jesus Christ, the word of God, Jesus Christ. And he said he was drawn. And he came and he got saved. I got to pray with him. And so that kid walked to this other pastor's house with his pastor, so it was legit, and he says, I am now a pastor. And so that's what I'm seeing. I can tell you 500 stories of how it's God who draws all men into himself. And so we just walk in that, of how God draws people from everywhere to be healed, to be saved, to have their lives changed. There's a girl at Rudolph Foods that sends money every, every month for a, a lady, Ann, who's paralyzed from the waist down her husband left her because she could not provide. And so, so then to see her sit in a mud hut, and nobody knows her life, nobody knows it, but God did. And now she is being provided for by God. That's what I'm saying. So you've been, God placed you in a place that was full of corruption. Mm -hmm. He gave you strength to stand up amidst that corruption mm -hmm. and keep going. Right. And then the next step that God is, is, is you going to use is the medical realm. Mm -hmm. How will their lives change when, a hosp when that hospital is in working order, mm -hmm. when the pipes are in there, when the money has been provided to finish this, how are their lives gonna change? Their lives, the, the biggest thing is that they're going to know that Jesus Christ knows their ever need. And we always tell them his eyes are never off of you. And when they realize, they really realize that God sees their need. And so then you're going to see we have a man that is right across the dirt road that the daughter would come over and ask for medicine, ibuprofen, whatever, because here she was beating her dad and asking for medicine. This is what goes on, but if we can give them the provision of health, of even help psychologically, of what's going, somebody that that man could tell us, I'm being beaten, Things are going on that we, you know, I have dealt with mothers that have had their, son, the father broke the beer bottle and scraped her skull, broke her back. This is what people are dealing with and they have no outlet. 
They just have to keep taking it. But if we can give them a facility of help and hope in Jesus Christ and the empowerment to live in freedom. Because this is more than just a hospital, isn't it? It's, Here in the United States, we might think of a medical facility as just a place you walk into, but this is a medical mission facility. That's right. So how do we help next? What are things that people can be doing to get on board with you and uh, to be involved in this? The biggest thing, as I always say, is obey the Holy Spirit. Again, I don't market Jesus Christ. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, then you obey him. Because then I know there's going to be spiritual power on your dollar. And I don't want a dollar without spiritual power. I don't want to. It's too sacred. And so whatever God tells you to do, you do. And if you obey him, then I obey him. Then we're going to have the movement of God in Africa. And it's not going to be on a pill. It's not going to be on, on a physician. It's going to be on the Holy Spirit. If somebody wants to contact you, is your website the best way to find you? What, what would be the source you'd like them to use? The website's the easiest. And for the older people that, that don't know, how, you know, maybe doesn't have a computer, then just ask your pastor. You know, I heard this chick on WTLW and, and, and I need to get a hold of her. Call the station. Absolutely. Because yeah. to me, the, the older people are the ones that have the wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever. And so, you know, we, we need to say, you know, you don't have a computer, just call somebody. Call the station and, you know, Shell can get me in touch with, you know, so whatever. Yeah, absolutely. If you call us here at TV44 and say, I need to find Janelle Taviano, we will connect you with her. We will make sure that it happens. And how about prayer needs? How can people be praying for everything that's taking place, not just in your ministry, mm -hmm. but in the things that you know are happening there. I, the things that we don't recognize, you've mm -hmm. walked there, mm -hmm. you've stood in those mud huts, you've seen the heartache in those mothers mm -hmm. who are sending their kids off. How can we be praying? The, the biggest thing is that, that the word of God is truth and that the individuals over there adhere to the truth. I always go over and speak, is this cultural truth or is this biblical mm -hmm. truth? And once they attach themselves to the truth of Jesus Christ, they will be able to live in freedom and know God will tell them how to get out of it. God will give them the strength. And, and, and again, it's the truth, the truth of Jesus Christ on Kenya. All right, the truth of Jesus Christ on Kenya, Janelle Taviano, Unrained Ministries. The website again is Unrained. Dot com incredible things that God has birthed over there. Janelle probably never, ever, ever would have imagined it would happen, yet God knew all along that it would. All right, what an incredible story with more to come. Isn't it great when God is working and we know he's not finished yet? Please join me in praying for Unrained as God continues to move in that region. Back to you. Well, maybe you had a chance to meet Dr. Trudy Pieper when she was in Lima this past Saturday. If not, you've certainly seen her on Faith and Friends. We have great news for you. Some brand new health topics from Dr. Trudy will appear on Faith and Friends in the weeks to come, including stress, blood sugar, fighting cancer, and how to spring detox. Watch for that and more in the coming weeks. Well, coming up on May 20th, we're pleased to bring you the movie Healed by Grace. This is the second of three movies produced by David Weiss in Blended Planet Movies based out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Here's a look at what you can expect in the upcoming movie Healed by Grace. Tomorrow, you dance in front of one of the premier judges on this planet. If I win this, I'm one step away from being a professional dancer. In your dreams. Dimitri Stone will not cut you any slack. Now it's going to take energy, passion, and focus. Dance for God's glory and give him your very best. You may proceed. Good luck. Looks like it's just not your day, Riley. Aaliyah doesn't have what you have in here. Our top three finisher. Can I call you back? You suffered from severe brain contusions. When can I start dancing? If we help her develop new skills. What are we talking about? Equine therapy. Name's Golf. Right, take care of most of the horses. Well, come on, we got the rules to go over. Riley Adams? Hi, I'm Casey. That's your therapist. 
That's not a therapist, honey. That, that's a guy. You really like her, huh? Maybe I can pull some strings and we can work with her next lesson. You guys seem like you're made for each other. I can do this. I've got to make nationals. Doc says I get to start dancing again, so you know what that means. Nationals. I just don't think you should have that girl on Grace. You should be out there instructing her. You're not going to be able to ride Grace anymore. Didn't Lexus tell you? She wouldn't do that. We all know you're not going to be up for it. What God do he does? I'm not giving up. Riley and Grace, they're a team. Sometimes our ideas aren't God's ideas. Kick butt at nationals, okay? Do it for me. Well, looking forward to that movie. You don't have to wait to watch this every single day, Andy Griffith. So many of you tell us how much you enjoy watching the Andy Griffith Show. No matter how many times you see the episodes, you say, it's just like watching them for the first time. And during April, we're presenting to you the top 30 Andy Griffith episodes of all time. Maybe you missed some of those during our Saturday Andy marathons. Well, here's a look at the top five. See if you agree <laughs> with the critics. But these are the best. Coming in at number five, the citizen's arrest. Gomer makes a citizen's arrest of Barney for committing the same traffic violation that Barney just ticketed him for. This causes Barney to overreact, resigning as deputy and demanding a jail sentence in lieu of paying the fine. When Gomer finds out how far it has gone, he tries to come up with a solution. Well, when it appears that Opie is using an imaginary friend to get out of work and explain gifts that came from nowhere, Andy becomes seriously concerned. And that's the number four episode, the unforgettable Mr. McBeavy. <laughs> number three is Opie the Birdman. That Opie is just... He's a rascal. <laughs> After Opie kills a mother bird with a new slingshot, he takes on the job of raising her babies himself. He grows very attached to them, but then has to set them free when they get big. How about number two? A businessman's, a businessman's car breaks down two miles from Mayberry on a Sunday. He walks to town, finds it deserted until church lets out. The stranger can't believe the pace of life in Mayberry and everyone's lack of urgency. Andy tries to talk him into spending the night and getting the car fixed on Monday, but he'll hear of no such thing at, a, at first, that is. That's episode called Man in a Hurry. That almost sounds like an episode from the Twilight Zone. And gardening is at the top spot. Aunt B and Clara Johnson are both jarring homemade pickles. The only difference, Clara's are good enough to have won the blue ribbon the, at the fair 11 years in a row, while Aunt B's taste like they've been floating in kerosene. It's the pickle episode, and of course you can watch the Andy Griffith Show every night at 8 p.m right here on TV 44. I mean, that's like our pickled onions. Ah, bacon we would have won. I know it. Blue ribbons won. all around. <laughs> well, the Andy Griffith Show falls in our category of family friendly programming. Of course, that's just a small portion of our programming lineup. There are so many incredible preaching and teaching shows, shows on health, marriage, and of course, local shows like Sports Report and this one, Faith and Friends. We are told there is no station like WTLW and we attribute that to God's guidance and his provision. We want to take a moment to say thank you for your partnership in the Spring to Life campaign. Just one week to go in our spring campaign. I want to thank Joan Adams from Menden for your gift. Also want to say thank you to a family in Bluffton. Uh, so appreciative of your partnership here with TV44. A viewer from Pandora tells us she is so thankful for the stations and the many fine programs. Also want to thank a, a gift from Van Wert as well. You know, if you've been thinking of giving to TV44, now is a great time to do so. No gift is too small nor too large. You can donate securely at WTLW.com. You can donate by mail, donate over the phone or in person. Also consider signing up for automatic monthly withdrawal. It's a safe and reliable way to continue to partner with TV44 each and every month of the year. Well, maybe financial donations are not something that you are able to do right now, but I would venture to guess you have something in your home that you no longer need. I think we all have a few of those items. Maybe you have one of these, or maybe you need one of these. 
can donate to the TV44 auction. We're already accepting donations now. These are just a few of the things we've already received. A 1944 inspection of locomotive brake and signal equipment book mm. and some very old pots. pots. These are just a few. We've got like eight or ten of them. We got some great things that perhaps you're looking to redo your home theater. Some, some really some nice film type of uh, wall hangings and uh, really can get into the spirit of uh, redecorating. Plenty of time for you to donate now as you're doing that spring cleaning. Just drop things off during business hours here at the TV station. Furniture, tools, collectibles, automobiles, always a hit here at the auction. Perhaps you have some gift cards that you're not going to use and you'd like to bless somebody with here at the TV station. We will put that in our boutique. As There's so many different ways that you can be a part mm -hmm. of it. Yep. It's not too early to plan to attend this year's auction and it's not too early to plan to volunteer as well. So get your calendar uh, ready September 10th right here on the TV44 grounds. More information on this year's auction can be found by calling us at 419-339-4444. Always love auction day. Well, we close with another look at our scripture. Remember, we're focusing on godliness through the month of May. Titus 2, verses 11 through 13. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take a look at your life today and see what areas need cleaned up a little bit. Where could you use some help in godliness? Call a friend and journey that road together. We, we do better in community, uh, especially when we're going down this road of faith. Have a great week.